Welcome to our YouTube channel. My name is Ardell and I'm really proud to be showcasing this video. Today's video, I'm actually walking you around something slightly different to our normal YouTube channel videos. I'm actually showcasing exactly how an application works for the dash cam that's in our Ford Mustang demo car. It's a Thinkware U1000 front and rear solution with an iVolt battery, but I'm actually focusing solely on the, how the app actually works and how you guys can interact and get footage from that, plus change all your settings. If you've had the install done by ourselves here in Cambridge, you'll be finding this video useful because we can't do our normal handover procedure due to current COVID restrictions in the UK currently. But if you haven't had the install done by ourselves, hopefully it's done to highest possible installation standards. Future installs, you know exactly what to do. But I'm going to be showcasing that and hopefully you find this video helpful of how the app actually works. We're going to be jumping in the car very soon and I'm going to be showcasing exactly that to you guys. So to start off with is downloading the application from your either your app store if you're using an iPhone or a Google Play store. What you're looking for, I think we actually have two different applications, which is quite confusing, but what we want to download is something called Thinkware Cloud. That's if you're using the Q800 Pro dash camera or the U1000. If you're using the F70 dash camera, you're going to want to use the Thinkware standard application. However, we're not going through that today. All we're focusing on is the Q800 and U1000 range using the Thinkware Cloud. So I've already downloaded that from my app store. It's a completely free application you can download. You're greeted with this home page at the moment. So this is very important that you understand that once you're linked up to your dash cam, you'll gain access to all of this. However, at the moment we haven't linked up. So this is basically just showing your file list and no other feature of the app is available. So we're sat in the car currently, the Mustang is up and running, the five liter is all running and rumbling away. As you see here, we've got here, so we're not connected to the dash cam currently. The only part of the application that we have access to is the downloaded video section. I've had these camera systems in my cars for the last previous few years. So I've already got a couple of sort of files already saved up on my um, on my downloaded section. But these can be located, you can access these wherever you are in the world without the car, you don't need to be connected at all. So just to give you guys an example, we've got a bit of footage here, um, which is a image of basically um, an accident that occurred by one of our customers. And we've got this footage and I've saved it to my downloaded section. And as you can see, it's a really nice clear image. And this was actually on the Q800 version. So this was on my previous dash cam to the U1000 that I've got in the Mustang. So as you can see here, the way it displays in the actual application is the same on all parts, which I'll show you in a second. So F and R stands for front and rear. So if you just have the front dash camera installed, you'll just have an F without the R. Then it's done in a date format. So 2020, 10th month and 25th day. And then you've got the time, which is 21, 14 and eight seconds front. And that relays as a full segment. So where they're linked, that means you've got a front video and a rear video linked together. So that's download video. Now I'm gonna actually show you guys how to actually connect up your phone to your dash cam. So Android and iPhones do vary slightly, which I'll go through in a little bit. This is on an iPhone. So you click here and then you want to click on connect via Wi-Fi. Bear in mind that the vehicle needs to be on and your dash camera needs to be on as well. It says here, activate the Wi-Fi and you need to do this every time. On Android phones, normally it pops up with your Wi-Fi um, available networks right here. However, iPhones don't quite do the same. So what we need to do on the iPhones is, which you can start from here if you wanted to once the app's downloaded, you go to settings, you go to Wi-Fi, and it's automatic come up saying Thinkware. So on this is a brand new phone for me. I haven't actually connected to this dash cam just yet. So it's a really good example of how this works. So as you can see here, Thinkware 73, and these will vary. So it will come up Thinkware saying different numbers, but 73 is on this one. As you can see on here, we've got all of the data for the Wi-Fi. Your password is gonna be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine and that's how you access that software um, and this, um, this network here. So as I go to connect, so I've not connected before um, on, this, on this particular phone, so I'll just make sure, because it was on my previous phone, so I'll just forget that network, and we're gonna log in when it comes up. So there, it's asking me for password. So your password is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That is your password for all dash cameras for the Q800 and the U1000 range. But if you want to change that, you can do in the app. However, 
you don't necessarily need to, but the option is there. So you just wait for that to connect. However, this is not giving you Wi-Fi as such. It's just a link between your phone and the dash camera. So then what you do is you go back to your application and you give it a couple of seconds because what it's doing is establishing a connection between the actual dash camera and the actual app itself. So on here, so say I've connected via my normal settings, on the Android side of things, what it does is it automatically comes up with your setting, your available networks, and you can click via that. So sometimes like now, obviously this is live with a brand new phone, I've connected via my normal source, so I'm gonna go here, connect via Wi-Fi, and next, and you allow that to go through. And we will just be waiting for this basically to an establish a connection. So I'm inside a building at the moment, which means my signal's not brilliant. However, it's there connected as you guys can see. So it does take a couple of seconds, so bear with it. And it's establishing that connection to get all the footage down onto the phone. So now, as you can see from my previous part of the video, that this is all now live. So you can click on everything. So you've got dash cam info, which tells me I've got a U1000 dash camera and my GPS is connected. Connection settings, this is where you can change your password if you wanted to um, and customize that, but you don't necessarily need to be able to do that. In terms of the actual footage, we've got live view. This is really based on our initial setup, which has already been done. So what we've got is the front camera and then we've got the rear up at the top to show you the rear image there. So this is out of a tinted window, heavily tinted window at the back. So even then it's still very, very clear. As you can see what it's just done here, and that's actually a really key thing that I wanted to talk about. What that's done there is sort of flickering. It sometimes goes to green and sometimes goes pink and purple or fuzzy like this. What's happening there is the Wi-Fi connection from the camera to your phone is struggling a little bit and that's why it's doing that. However, on little bits of footage under say, for instance, under continuous incident or continuous recording, what that's doing is downloading that footage only via Wi-Fi. Once you download that footage over to downloaded videos, it becomes crystal clear. So just bear that in mind that it's not damage, it's not corrupt footage, it's just via the Wi-Fi signal that you've got. So entering into file list, and this is where you're gonna be going to gain all that valuable bit of footage that you need to send off to your insurance company or send to friends and family if you've seen something rather funny on the roads. So continuous is while you're driving, continuous incident is an incident while you're driving, Motion detection and parking incidents are to do with when the vehicle is parked. We only recommend that you have parking mode on, which I'll show you in a second, if you have the iVolt battery fitted to your vehicle. If you're looking to add a secure way of not having battery drain on your vehicle and adding in a parking mode facility, make sure you go for the iVolt battery. We can carry that installation even after you've had your install, maybe done somewhere else or done by ourselves here in Cambridge. But then you've got manual recording, which not many sort of bits of footage go into, and then you've got downloaded videos just here as well. So continuous is while you're driving. So this is where majority of incidents are gonna happen, but they can automatically categorize in continuous incident. As you can see here, you've got front and rear, which is linked, which is the camera system I've got. And then it shows time and date and all the way through, and it goes on for quite a while. I don't use this car massively much, but as you can see here, I mean, my last bit of footage was on the 13th of the 12th, 2020. However, in about near enough nine months, I've only done 3,700 miles. So I don't do many miles in this particular car, but in other cars that I've got this same dash camera in, it's a lot more fluid and the amount of time that you're going to have on the SD card is dependent on how you drive and everything like that as well. You can also subcategorize this for just a front incident, but front and rear is a really nice bit of, bit of footage. So if you have an incident on the front, it's worthwhile have, saving that rear bit of footage just because it gives you that little bit of backup as well. So as you see here, you click on the middle of it and you'll get the footage and that's actually me talking back in the video and they're very, very short clips because they're insurance approved systems. As you can see, you've got three little dots along the side of each bit of footage. Say that was a really important bit of footage and that was an accident, for instance, what you want to do is press that three little dots and you press download. What that does in the download procedure, it downloads to the internal memory of the actual dash camera itself. And what that's doing is copying that and that's actually, as you can see by the file size there, it's rather large, even though it's a very, very short bit of footage. 
when we clicked on that, it went a little bit fuzzy, but when I go on to download the videos, that's gonna be inch perfect, it's gonna be crystal clear. So just gives you an idea, this does take a bit of time. This can also be done on your laptop as well. In the box that we supply you, if you don't have that, you can buy that from um, Thinkware themselves, but it gives you an idea. Basically, you can unplug the SD card from the dash camera and you can plug that into your computer and view all the footage, all the change, all the settings, all from there as well. But it is far easier via the app and it saves having to take it in and out of the car. So once that's downloaded, that'll go through into downloaded footage. From there, you press the three dots again and you export that into your normal photos. On Androids, as far as I'm aware, I think that automatically goes into your um, photo album. However, on iPhones, you do have to manually export that, but that's always saved in the app. So now that's downloaded just there. We, it still stays here, but when we go into downloaded videos, I've got a new file and that's on the 6th of January, 2021. So when I click on that video, as you can see, it's crystal clear. It's only a very, very short bit of clip, but that's actually how long an instant normally takes. It doesn't take very long. It's done in a matter of seconds. So here we can export that and that can go into our normal folder of photos and albums or pictures. And we can then send that over to our insurance company if that was an instant. They work in exactly the same way on here, front and rear, and they just go through. So you sort of have to have a little bit of a hunt. The main thing that you do, if you have an accident, note down time and date of the incident, and then you can go through and find your bit of footage. So in essence, they all work exactly the same here. So I won't go bore you too much, but in exactly the same way, three dots and download that and export it. The main thing is during your dash cam settings. So I'm gonna work you through these now. So memory card settings, you can format your SD card from here. Also, you can do that on the camera itself when you're not connected to the app. You've got memory partition, leave this as continuous priority because that's more than likely where you're gonna have an incident if you need to. Basically, that's subcategorizing, giving you more priority to your SD card for that part of the um, footage. As you can see, resolution, we've got the 4K camera because that's on the U1000. We've turned brightness on the front up. And we've left it at mid on the rear. However, you can turn that up as well. So say you wanted to change that setting. So say I want to change my setting from mid to bright. What I'm going to do is I'm going to press the back button. What it does, is it says setup changes have been saved. That's really, really important. It makes the app really easy to use. So as soon as we go back, saves you whatever setting you've done. You can actually log out of the app now by closing the app and you can carry on as normal. You can close it down. Bear in mind as well, guys, that you don't need to be connected to the dash cam day to day. This is only when you want to change the setting. So camera settings, we've gone through. So that's all changed now um, under record settings. So we've got sensitivity as lowest. That's because this is a muscle car. It rides quite hard um, at the moment. So we wanted that on lowest because it sets it off over speed bumps and bits and pieces like that. Super night vision, we're on parking, but the best thing to do is put that on continuous and parking mode. It's in enhanced night vision, night vision mode. Parking mode, we've got that motion detection. So that's working off the iVolt battery. So there's zero battery draw off the actual vehicle itself. Then I've pressed back, so I've saved all those settings. Then one key thing as well is the road safety settings, which is really useful. So I've got my speed camera detection on. So it, it uh, verbally will recognize a camera and, it, and tell me about that. I have turned mobile zone alert off. What that does is it tells you where sort of emergency service vehicles could have been. It's a little bit annoying for me, so I've turned that off. Then vehicle type and stuff doesn't really matter too much. And then the lane departure and safety features, I've disabled all of them on my camera system because my car does it already, but by all means you can just turn them on. Then what we've got in system settings, I've got mine on volume two. Again, you can turn that up and down. We either recommend that being on one, two or three rather than the zero. On my car as well, what I've got is I've turned off the LED lights. You've got front and rear LED lights that you can have enabled on the front and rear camera. However, I've turned mine off. My car's always secured in a controlled environment, so it's hardly ever parked on the road, so I don't need to have that on. But by all means, you can turn that on. It's nice and easy. Moving on from that, what we've got is the speed stamp. So this is actually going to be displayed, your speed displayed on your actual footage. You don't need to have this. I've got this disabled. However, if you want your speed displayed on your footage, you just press enable there. Frequency brand, you don't need to worry about there. And then also the voice recording. I find this actually quite useful because some of our customers have actually had instances where there's no real view of the actual incident itself for instance however there is a voice recording plus if you have an incident and somebody is uh, sort of swearing at you or anything like that you have that voice recording that should pick up a little bit depending on how loud everything is 
inside and outside the car as well. So that's quite useful. So I've got that enabled on my phone here. So that's basically a brief overview of all the settings. However, you do also have the ability to set up a hotspot. For instance, I actually haven't set this up on my phone yet or on this camera system, because I find that whenever I want to access footage, this is more than enough for me. However, if you wanted to do that, by all means, you can do. So this is a brief overview of the actual whole application here. So you've got your file list to go through again. So where you're going through something on motion detection, this is where it's picking up via parking mode. You can see the footage as it loads up there. And that's with my uh, with the bonnet up earlier. Uh, so as you can see, there's loads of bits of footage under motion detection, and that's because I've got the iVolt battery installed on the vehicle. So if you don't have the battery installed on the vehicle, all you do is you go onto dash cam settings, you go under, um, under record settings, and you want to turn off parking mode and just put it on disabled on that that's because they otherwise if you don't do that you'll have a physical draw on your battery even though it's very very small it's still a draw on your vehicle's battery and you don't want that so make sure you either have the iVolt battery fitted or parking mode is disabled so now we're going to be moving over to actually showcase the actual camera itself on the front go through the buttons on there and actually what you can do and control from there so now we're actually focusing on the actual camera itself. So this is focusing on the U1000 front dash camera. It's a 4K image quality dash camera. One of the highest spec dash cameras you guys can buy on the market currently. We're going to be talking through the connections first. We've got two connections here. Top one, which is if you just have a front dash camera, you'll just have this one connector. This is power. Then on the bottom here, you've got the actual connector for your rear camera. So that's only available if you have the rear camera fitted. On the actual camera itself, you've got Wi-Fi flashing, record setting and GPS. Record and GPS want to be on a constant light because they are showing you that the dash camera is working. The, to get a, a bit of footage saved into manual recording on the app, which you've just seen, you can actually press the record button here and it will automatically save into that manual record setting. However, it's already recording anyway, so I don't really see much point in this button here, but it's there as another feature. You've got two little vents here, which are showing you where the actual voice is coming out from. Then you've got three buttons here. You've got a manual turn off on and off. If your installation has been carried out by ourselves here at CBS Automotive and Cambridge Car Audio, it would have already been installed to the highest possible standard. So it's automatically going to come on when your vehicle turns on and also when it turns off. However, you can manually turn it on and off from there as well. If your camera system isn't connecting to your phone for whatever reason, you can do a manual override of the Wi-Fi, press that little Wi-Fi icon and that will boost the signal to your phone. And you've also got the ability to very easily turn off your voice recording, which is also available in the settings section, which I've shown you previously in the video. But it's really key that you can just turn that off, pressing one button and you can turn that on and off whenever you please. So it gives you a bit of an overview of the actual camera itself. Plus, whenever you want to, you can slide the camera away from this to the left and then the camera actually comes off. So you've got the adhesive pad, which is just here and then you've got the back of the panel here. So when you're applying that into the vehicle, two lug points there, one there, and that just goes on really easy onto the back of the camera housing. So we're all done here. Hopefully you found the video useful. You've seen how the app actually works, but also how you guys can change settings and access all the footage. So due to the current restrictions, we can't actually go through and do a proper handover at the moment. So hopefully you found the video useful. Thank you very much. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button below. We'll see you soon.